in nine, Christmas 1949. Yes. And it's magical at Christmas at St George's. They had um, big Christmas trees, one each side of the main entrance, and they were all illuminated, all the fairy lights on the Christmas trees. And the other thing you see we did then in those days was discharge everybody good for Christmas and take in all those who hadn't got anywhere to go for Christmas. Oh, right. Was that fun? Oh, that was great fun. So did you always have a full ward at Christmas? Yes. And stockings. Me, what happened? I mean, yeah, stockings. Stockings. We decorated the Christmas the, the ward on Christmas Eve mainly from Harrods. Harrods used to supply us where we could go down to the basement in Harrods and pick up anything we wanted. Goodness. Because um, they were we were their first aid post, uh, and um, there was one day, one time where we turned the ward into so no kings was turned into um, Neptune's cavern. They got the nets that they decorated, lots of fish floating round, paper fish floating round inside. Um, we turned ours into the Garden of Eden at one stage. Fitz, and you, we had a Christmas tree on each ward. All the wards had secrets from one another about what they were going to do, <laughs> and they were all. They often had a theme to them. Um, I remember Edward Wilson being one of the wards, and of course he went to the Antarctic. He was a doctor who went to the Antarctic mm -hmm. with Scott. And so they had a polar theme and they made a big polar bear out of, out of pillows. And uh, um, during the course of Christmas, the, the string that held all the pillows together got cut. <laughs> and he, there were pillows all over the place. And no polar bear left. <laughs> um, Christmas was fun. Um, because patients' relatives would come and decorate the wards. And when visitors came in, and, and um, there would be a collecting box by the door as they went out, you know, for um, donations. Yes, that's right, donations for the Christmas ward. Doctors and the nurses put on a, a show, and I volunteered to be in this. And um, I just remember being made up and whoever was doing it said what are you and I said oh just a nurse and she said never say just a nurse <laughs> which is uh, I remember these funny little things it was great fun they were putting on the show all sorts of medical jokes and things it was it was it was good um on Christmas day as I remember everybody worked and everybody worked all day the idea being that then there wouldn't be so much work because they were just are so well staffed. And I did join, there was a hospital choir at Christmas. We had rehearsals and I sang in the carols and then in the, in the chapel, which was a lovely little chapel. And then on Christmas Eve, we used to put our cloaks on the other way around so the red side was showing and go around the wards singing. And that was really nice. I was in the choir, because I could sing, you see. And he was standing outside singing in the traffic, stopping to listen. <laughs> oh, right. The, what, the choir stood on, on the steps? On his ears, one or two cars banging into the one in front. <laughs> <laughs> really? <I don't> <laughs> and of course, we all wore our capes inside out, as you know. I had a patient, actually, who I took with me. And I came back from the carols, and this patient had wanted to go to the midnight mass, and he was a bit nervous about being on his own because he'd been palpating, you know, earlier in, been fibrillating earlier in the night, and earlier in the day. So I actually took him with me, you know. We, um, uh, and every every night I kept him to take his pulse every night again, <laughs> and stethoscope with me. And, um, but it was nice. I sort of escorted him. He said, oh, he said, no, you take my arm. <laughs> so that, that was nice that last Christmas. I do remember. I uh, one Christmas I was at Atkins and Morley. And there was one particular nurse who was, uh, I'll just say she was, she was a pretty Irish girl. And in those days we used to put our shoes outside the door to be cleaned. And on Christmas Eve she went round, she went round the rooms and changed all the shoes round. Well, you can imagine there was absolute panic station in the morning because everyone had two two shoes that didn't match, neither of which were theirs. But anyway, we got that sorted. That was fun. We used to gather up all the 
doctors or anybody who was free to come and have breakfast. And we used to have breakfast in North Theatre, and I've got some photographs of that, and it really was fun. Um, so Christmas was great. When I was on Ewing uh, for a Christmas, and there again, they obviously we didn't have so many surgical patients in, it was a men's surgical ward at the back, and uh, it adjoined the eye wards, and in the evening, um, we did join with the... I was nurses and did some eights and reels and Scottish dancing, having left a sort of a nurse on uh, patrol on each ward. <laughs> so although you were working, it was still quite fun. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes. One of the f consultants would usually dress up as Father Christmas, and um, he would, well, depending on what ward it was and who it was, but they would usually bring round a. a pack a parcel or a sock you know for each of the patients and then he would come in or he or, mm, I don't think there were any she's in those days uh, and cut the turkey in view of all the patients mm -hmm. not just bring in a, a foil thing of turkey and sprouts or whatever you have as you do these days Lunch was always in two sittings in the daytime and um, I think we all tried to get to the same one. And uh, yes, we had a little menu. It was all set out in long tables and, and mm -hmm. actually I think I sent my menu up to the archive. I kept one that everybody had signed on the back. Um, and that was before the days of computers. You know, it was a nice little sort of uh, menu with Father Christmas on the front. And on Christmas Day... Jewish women's organisations used to come in and wash up the dishes in the ward kitchens so that the maids could have a day off on Christmas Day, which I thought was a lovely gesture. Mm -hmm. Then on Christmas Day, we were allowed to smoke on the wards and take our caps off. <laughs> Great joy to us, believe it or not. Um, and I remember Miss Powell coming into the ward and there was I lounging in front of the fire with a cigarette in my mouth and my cap on the mantelpiece and I stood up and she said, sit down nurse. Most odd it was, we got so excited about the smoking and taking our caps off. I remember at the Atkins and Morley at Christmas, the unconscious patients um, who used to have tube feeds we didn't have prepared tube feeds like they do now. We used to have um, their normal meal, which we used to liquidise and water down so that they would go down tubes. But at Christmas, they always had their glass of wine down the tube as well. Did you notice any effect <laughs> in their observations? <laughs> I don't think so, but it was just a, a touch. I don't know what it did to them, but uh, I certainly remember that. What do they do that now? I wouldn't think so. If a patient died in the low ward, they used to put screens all along and make a corridor so they could carry the body out and they wouldn't know. Christmas Day, that really wasn't very really practical. So they used to take the body through the, oh, the ward, no screens or curtains, but turned round so it looked as if he was going to theatre. And a nurse would walk with a kidney dish and a tongue detractor, you know, thing, forceps. So it looked as if it was somebody going to theatre, not somebody who died. Lunchtime on Christmas Day, uh, we always had one of our senior physicians to carve the bird in the middle of the ward. And we flamed the pudding and everything, you know, <laughs> right there. And we had live candles. Um, on the Christmas tree mm. and when certainly when I was on Oxford as a ward sister we had a fire mm. and we didn't think too much about it I mean we had it under control it, um, a curtain brushed against the tree and caught one of the candles mm -hmm. and we pulled the curtain off and rolled it up and that was the end of that you know. And, but we didn't put out the candles when <laughs> I think I mean it's bizarre when you think about it mm. 
and the building, of course, being so old and it was it had all wooden floors and big beams and it's rather horrifying when you think about it. <laughs> Quite often the doctors would come dressed up with towel. I don't know if towel was used to wipe bottoms oh, yes. and if you were laying a patient out it went in first before you put the cotton wool, a very absorbent material, sort of very coarse cotton wool, but it was they used to have towel wigs. Um, at Christmas time, which they, they put on to entertain them. Um, and you, quite often the sisters would give nurses on their ward presents. I've still got um, the present I had as my last student nurse, which um, Sister Cruz gave us. Gosh, what um, was that? It's a little glass tray. I should by my bed. Um, a little gla- sort of ashtray thing. It's just a nice little oh. glass dish. Oh, yeah. Um, well, my first Christmas, I'd only been there about two months and I was on the maternity ward and I was desperately homesick. I think it's the only time in my life I've been homesick because I was the only person, that, the only student nurse there. Everyone else had been in the hospital for years and uh, they didn't, I think they sort of forgotten about me, really. I didn't enjoy that at all. But after that, the other Christmases were... I think I was off one Christmas, but they, they were quite fun. She was was in labor, labor, but um, it progressed very quickly, and then she had a very difficult delivery in the end. And um, when the baby was born, it was completely flaccid, mm-hmm. white asphyxia, and really uh, looked quite dead. Nothing we did made any difference, and there wasn't an awful lot we could really do at that time. However, apart from clearing the baby's air passages and giving it this and that to stimulate it, and I just we looked, looked down at this child, and um, I prayed. I mean, what else is there when you've done everything you can? But I was... I, I just looked up in such surprise because this real sort of tough rugby playing New Zealander was saying, oh, oh, God, can't let him die. Not tonight, not on Christmas Eve. Suddenly, um, the famous lift, the doors clanged open and the voices of the carol singing Came on. The door of the um, anteroom swung open, and you saw the scarlet cloaks and the lanterns. And um, Christ was born in Bethlehem. <laughs> Wafted through the door, we did. And at that moment, precisely, the little chest fluttered. And he start, started to breathe hesitantly and whatever. And that was a miracle. Yes. You know, it, it was the most incredible thing. I never, I'll never forget it. And, and when I think of it, I still get shivers up my mm-hmm. spine. Um, but I had such a wonderful time my first Christmas. I never wanted to go home after that. I stayed. I wanted to be on duty every Christmas. So I was quite happy to stay on duty because it was such fun. You went from ward to ward when it got quiet because you only had the very ill patients in, and it didn't take a whole staff to look after the, the ones you'd got. Um, so it was good. I enjoyed Christmases. Great fun making Christmas a nice time for them. Mm-hmm.